All right, so uh, I am going to give a 50-minute talk inside of 10 minutes, and so this is going to go really fast. I'm going to talk really fast. There's lots of slides. This is a feature, not a bug. Deal with it. Um, that's who I am, and what I want to start off with talking about is why is innovation important? It's really sad that we have to ask this question, but we are, after all, living in a, an age, wow, those lights are really bright. Uh, we're living in an age of franchises. I mean, if you look at the top 10 list, it seems like if you don't have a big franchise, you're nowhere. If you don't have a GTA, if you don't have a, a, a Madden or a Star Wars, haha, <laughs> you guys suck. Um, the rest of you have to just sort of deal with it. And so, but that does not mean that innovation is important. In fact, if you don't have one of those things, innovation is more important and it's still possible to innovate inside of this industry. In fact, it is the only way that you can really hope to succeed. Um, and so, at the same time, it's really important to realize that there is such thing as bad innovation. I will not name these games, you might know what they are, uh, but they're what we like to call innovation misfires, places where the train went off the tracks, and it would be a good idea to avoid those. And so I just wanted to give you guys, who might be design sort of sensitive, some ideas and some things to think about when you're actually thinking about innovative and what innovations are important to put inside of your games, whether they are big projects or little iPhone games or student projects. The first thing I would say is to swing big, right? Have a big innovation in your game. Have something you can hang your hat on. Have something you can describe in a single sentence that people say, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you can't describe it in a sentence, it's probably just not really that good. It's probably all in your head and it's not tangible enough, right? Big ideas are big innovations. I mean, think about The Sims and how different that was from everything else. This is a big idea, but it's also a bold one and a simple one. Right? Similarly, Wizard 101, we, you can describe this in a sentence. It is Harry Potter combined with Pokemon combined with collectible card crack, right? I mean, I would give money to, to Todd and them if he had described that to me and I had a chance to. I mean, this is a simple, bold, big idea. And similarly, I mean, uh, Puzzle Quest, great game. We all love this game. I and mean, this is a very, very simple idea of adding an RPG layer to a uh, Bejeweled clone. Right? Bejeweled clones are not new, not unique, there's a billion of them, but this is the one that caught the imagination of a whole bunch of people because of the way that it was different, because of that big idea. That idea resonated with people, and you guys might remember that from my last talk, when I talked about resonance, which is actually thinking about something that speaks to the audience that you're trying to go for. So on Star Wars The Old Republic, we're taking a bet that the idea of having quests that don't suck inside of your MMO is going to be something that resonates with a lot of people. Right? You know. Think about a, a Spider-Man, right? This is a great game, and part of the reason why is they really wanted to capture the idea of web slinging through a city. They thought that that was an idea that would capture the imagination of anyone who has ever, I don't know, seen a Spider-Man cartoon or movie in their lifetime, right? It was an idea that resonated, and the rest of the game could even be a little lackluster because doing this was so frickin' cool. Thief wasn't originally a stealth game. When they made this game, it was going to be a little more on the RPG side, but when they discovered, when they put in the stealth missions, they realized that this is actually what people really liked, what people were really enjoying, and they said, hey, this is really cool inside our game, we should do more of that. And so they retooled a lot, uh, a lot of the content to make it more stealthy and made the sequels even more stealthy because of that, right? They found what people who were playing the game actually found that resonated. Support your innovation. So you've got your big tenant idea, it, it resonates with people. Actually be sure that the features that you're putting in bend towards that innovation. So it is really easy for you to innovate in a billion different areas, but if you're going to innovate, the things that you want to do are the things that elevate your design. You know, again, inside of Star Wars, we make a lot of decisions about the areas that we innovate and the things that we want to do is to support the things that will make our storytelling uh, experience really top notch and in a place that we will actually own the market. Um, you know, Braid. Great game. There are a lot of games that have time travel in them, but Braid really just, you know, every feature in this game is built towards supporting about what can we do with cool, with, that's cool with a platformer, uh, with the idea of time travel, right? That's all they did. They just really focused on that. Eve is successful not because they copied WoW. There was another space game that copied WoW. It didn't do, so, uh, at the time, EverQuest, it didn't do so good. Uh, Eve said, hey, what we're making is this sort of libertarian hellhole slash paradise where you're living the privateer dream, every feature we're going to do is going to support that vision and make that vision more real and tangible. And the fan base eats it up because you are delivering their vision, you are delivering your big promise, your big innovation. Portal has a tiny feature set, 
but how many of us even stop to realize that there's no combat in the game, right? Every feature in that game is all about the puzzle gameplay. Simplicity could be an innovation. You know, the iPod was not the first MP3 player. It was the first one that mom could use, right? Similarly, World of Warcraft, a lot of people say this game wasn't innovative. It was hugely innovative. It took Ultima Online and EverQuest and made it accessible enough that you didn't have to be a, a super nerd to figure out how to actually play the game. And you know, as a result of that, they expanded the entire market and the entire genre as a result of that. And similarly, Civilization Revolution I find hugely innovative because they found out how to, how to take the hardcore turn-based grocknard in me and get me done with my game in two hours, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, th th this is a, a true and important innovation to someone at my stage in my lifetime in my game playing career. I'm saying I'm old. <laughs> so you're doing all that, and one of the things you gotta do when you choose your innovation is be sure that players can actually see your innovation. It's only a good innovation if it is player facing and players have to actually get to it somehow. So take a look at Shadowbane. We had awesome innovation. People love to talk about our innovation. You could actually take your army of catapults, go to your enemy city, and burn it to the frickin' ground. It's pretty cool. Uh, the problem is that you didn't see that at all until you got to level 35, and even then, you're probably going to die as soon as you set foot on the battleground. So only a very small number of people actually saw that innovation and really saw the cool side of what the game can do. You know, uh, the player-created content games, people who do this, uh, they, have to pay, uh, they have to, or should, place a premium on being sure you can find the good content because a lot of player-created content is crap. It is true. Uh, and if you stumble upon that when you go into Second Life and you go into Neverwinter Nights, you're going to think that the whole experience is crap. So you got you know, it's all about making sure that the good stuff is player-facing, that the innovation bears fruit to the player immediately. Uh, Eve has a similar problem to uh, uh, Shadowbane in that the really cool stuff, you know, the stuff that gets on Kotaku and PC Gamer, uh, you have to play the game a long time to ever see it. And, you know, that's one of the failings of the design of EVE and, you know, something I'm surprised they don't address more aggressively. Sometimes changing emphasis just a little bit can be a huge innovation. You know, one of my favorite games is Left 4 Dead. So games, uh, first-person shooters have had co-op for forever, but Left 4 Dead is one of the first games that said, you know, this is what this game is about. And every design decision that we do is going to bend towards supporting that. And as a result of that, they have a really great player experience on their hands as a result of that. Uh, Diablo reinvigorated a dying RPG model by saying, hey, you know what's fun about RPGs? It's getting loot and killing things as frequently as possible. <laughs> Burnout, what's the best part of racing games? <laughs> right, play this game, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> Challenging assumptions, so very often times we are told things that sounds wrong, especially when players say I really wanna do X, but you know, oftentimes our assumptions are wrong. I'm about to show you three things that were considered gospel just 15 years ago that have all been disproven inside of the last 10 years. Remember this? Games with peripherals will never sell, ever. Don't do it. Girls will never play games. Hardcore gamers must have art that actually sets fire to their video card or they will not buy the game. Like, all of these assumptions have been proven wrong and all of these companies have gone in to, like, you know, all these games have borne great fruit and expanded the market and actually made the games much more deeper and more interesting as a result of that. It's possible to innovate too much. If you have a tentpole feature, be sure that your innovations support that tentpole feature. If you have innovations that are doing other things, that are doing squirrely things, you actually have uh, you know, not only squirrel away development resources away from what you consider the big feature, you also risk actually stealing away uh, uh, marketing resources and, and people talking about stuff that isn't as important as your big feature. Yeah, what I'm saying is constrain your innovation into stuff that's really important. You know, Gears of War cut a whole bunch of stuff because they fought with cover, right? They said, this is what's cool, this is what's fun inside of our game, we can't make it work with squad combat, so let's not do it, at least for version one, right? On the flip side of it, Ultima Online innovated in gazillion areas to such a degree that developers had problems tracking how these systems actually interacted with each other. It made it hard to support, hard to develop, and, and uh, uh, hard to police. 
it's only innovative if it's actually better than what players had before. I realize this is common sense, but we as designers very m often fall in love with the, our own ideas and fail to stop and think about, hey, players are used to this from another game, and which is faster, easier, more accessible, more fun. You know, a great example of this is, you know, Trespasser was a great study academically in physics. Terrible game. Um, Burnout Paradise. Hey, we're going to add an open world element into our, into our awesome crashing game. Yeah, now it's hard to run the same course twice and, and actually uh, 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 succeed at it. So it actually took the game a step backwards. It fought against the core innovation in the game. PlayStation Home. In Xbox, if you want to choose, uh, wanted to choose a movie, you choose it from a menu and you're in in 15 seconds. In PlayStation Home, you have to walk across a lobby. <laughs> it's prettier. But if all you want to do is watch a frickin' movie, it's actually more inefficient for the player, and eventually, uh, you know, they sort of gravitate away from that. And the last thing, this is what I, I hope the indie guys take away, is if you are making a really innovative game, you can actually do it cheaper for less money because you are competing with fewer people, right? Left 4 Dead, the art in Left 4 Dead is no crisis. It is no Half-Life 2. It doesn't have to be because they are making a co-op game and a lot of other people aren't. They own that space, they could do it cheaper. Katamari Damacy and, and Boom Blocks are other examples of no one else is making games like them, therefore they can have lower production values, they can have more cartoony art. Uh, Portal Steam, they said in their GDC talk that uh, they used to uh, you know, feel jealous of all the resources that Half-Life 2 got because the, they were in development at the same time, but I bet more of us remember our time playing Portal than that we do remembering our time playing Half-Life 2. So anyway, I am out of time, and uh, that's the summary, which you've already seen. And uh, that, if you have any questions, I guess I'll take them over by the beer counter. Thank you very much.